everybody. In this video, Miss Adams and I Hi everyone. are going to show you how to find a model for some quadratic data, but not using the method that we showed you in the last video, which was on systems. Systems, yeah. right. Um, this is actually using their differences. So, um, Miss Adams, do you remember we did this back in the other chapter about arithmetic sequences? Yes, using a sub n and exactly like that. So, the same idea, but now we're going to look at quadratics. So to start us off, let's look at the differences between these numbers. So 0 to 5, we'd add 5. 5 to 12, we'd add 7. 12 to 21, we would add 9. I think it's going up by 2. That's what it looks okay. like to me, yep. Um, 21 to 32 is 11? Yes. Okay. So that was our first difference. Notice that the first difference isn't constant, but there's a pattern to it. So the second difference we add 2 to those numbers, and that is constant. So I'm just going to make a little note here. A constant second difference is a sign that the data we're looking at is quadratic. If you um, think back to the other video, you probably took the first, was it first three points? Did you use the first three we points? We did use okay. the first three points, yeah. Um, and you set up a system, and you found those, the A, B, and C um, coefficients thank you, of the standard form of a quadratic. So on this, I, I think it's better to look at maybe three or four of the numbers. I would agree. Okay? So I'm going to set something up here for us to work on. So I'm making a table. And it's actually going to be pretty long. We're going to have multiple columns on this. So notice that our uh, second difference is 2, and in that exploration that we did in class that I heard went really well. It did class, go very well, that's yes. Excellent. Um, it, it told us that we should take a half of that number. A half of our second difference, Okay. and that will give us our coefficient on n squared. Okay, so this right here means that our a value is one. And we did that exploration, yes. so we can go back to that to look why that is. So I'm going to make a little note here that the start to our quadratic formula should be n squared. Now I'm not sure, let me make, make some marks over here, a n squared plus b n plus c, right, that's the standard form. I'm not really sure what these two coefficients are going to be, but I'm going to take take a try and see how close this n squared gets me. Okay. So we know that it's probably missing something with a bn and a c, but we're going to see how well this is. Uh, th this really does for us. So notice that we have 0, 5, 12, 21, 32. So we have five numbers. You don't have to do this, but typically we're, we'll do this. We will call this term, whatever the starting term is, the first term, typically. Right. right? So I'm going to say that it has n equal 1 to be the first term, that the 5 has n equaling 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And if I were to try the n squared, okay, as the entire formula, what would I get? That's, that's basically what I'm doing right now. So if I plug in 1, I'd get 1. If I plugged in 2, I'd get 4, 3 gets me 9, and 4 gets me 16. So what do you think? How, how close did I get to to these actual numbers in the in the sequence. So when n is 1, n squared is 1. And I'm comparing that 1 to 0. This 1 here yep, to with zero. this 0. Good. So then I'm comparing the 4 to 5. Exactly. And I'm comparing the 9 to 12 and the 16 to 21. Exactly. So how, how could I go from 1 to 5? We don't I mean, to, sorry, 1 to 0. Right. We want to go from 1 to 0. So I would subtract 1. Okay. So let's, let's say that now this 1 minus 1 would get us to 0. Exactly. Okay. How about with the 4? So if I wanted to go from 4 to 5, so from 4 to five. I would have to add 1. Yep. If I wanted to go from 9 to 12, I'd have to add 3. Okay. And from 16 to 21, I'd have to add 5. Now, it's too bad it's not off by the same number. Because then we would just say, oh, we'll add that to our formula. We'll be done. So I'm going to call this the off by column, just because I don't have anything better to call it. 
that's basically saying what these numbers in this column are off by. We really wish we were getting these numbers, we're getting these numbers, this is what we're going to have to do to change them. Do you notice anything about that column? Looks like there's a pattern in that column. And what pattern is that? That's plus two. As I'm going down that column, that's plus two. Good. So it's nice to see a pattern even though those were not the same number. So do you remember from that, um, the first chapter we did with arithmetic sequences, if we find a constant difference like that, that really means we have a linear equation. Right. Which is really useful because didn't we just say we're not sure what this this part of the formula is going to be? So I think this is going to help us. So notice that this is our first difference. Right? And it's constant. So that's really our slope. So I'm going to say that our b value is 2. Let's see how well that helps out. Okay. So now let's try our new formula. We still have our n squared, but let's add 2n to that and see what happens. So how's it sound so far? Sounds good. Okay. So can you help me out, out with that? What do we get? So again, I'm looking at mm -hmm. n being 1. Yep. So now I have 1 squared plus 2 times 1. Okay. So that's 3? That's 3. Then I have 2 squared plus 2 times 2. That's 8. 3 squared plus 2 times 3. This gives me 15. Mm -hmm. And 4 squared plus 2 times 4, which gives me 24. Good. So now we want to kind of regroup. Let's take a look again at these numbers and how closely they relate to the, the numbers we want to have. And sometimes it might look worse, to be honest. It might actually look worse. So notice that before, like on, on 1 here, we, we substituted 1 in for n, we got 1. We were actually off by negative 1. Now what are we off by? So now, now I'm going to compare the 3 to the 0, and I'm off by minus 3. So that doesn't that sound worse? It does sound a little bit worse, because now I'm off by a, like a You're farther off further. away number. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so on this next one, we are at 8. We would like to have a 5 there instead. So we're also off by 3. Hmm. And the reason we're putting negative again is that 8 is too big. We would subtract 3 to get to 5. So 15 to 12. It's minus 3. Also off by 3. Same with 24 and 21. So what do you notice there? So all I'm noticing is that my, my quadratic looks like it's going to be n squared plus 2n and then minus 3. Yeah, exactly. So if we hadn't have gotten a constant in that column, I would be worried. I'd be worried too. Okay. So notice that in our third column, right, this column right here, we actually could have figured out that the c or the, the constant value is negative 3. So I'm going to write down, using that column, the arithmetic explicit formula. So where do you think I got that negative 1 from? Well, our, in that column, the first, the first number there is negative 1. That's where you're starting the at. The first number, yeah. right? The first number, we then add 2 to that number to get all the other numbers. So does that look a little bit familiar? Very familiar. So if we put, or we sh I should say, we start our formula off with negative 1, and it's the first number, we'll represent that by putting n minus 1. Notice what happens when I simplify this. So we get negative 1 plus 2n minus 2. That simplifies to 2n minus 3. 2n minus 3. So my formula for this now is going to be a sub n equals n squared plus 2n minus 3. And actually, if I could fit it here, I would show you that we could actually like make a column for that. We could substitute in 1. Actually, we could do it right now really quick. Okay. So if I substitute <coughs> any of these n values, so let's try 1. If I substitute 1 in here, we get 1 squared is 1, one. plus 2 times 1 is 2. two. We're up to 3. Yep. Minus 3 would get you? 0. 0. Right, so we could do a whole column showing that. Just to make sure we were right. Yep. So does that sound good? It sounds great. All right, are you ready to try one? I want to try one. Okay. The first thing I have to do is prove that this is quadratic. So let me start by finding my differences. So this is plus 0, this is plus 6, plus 12, 
plus 18. So it looks to me like my second difference is constant because it's plus 6. Uh-oh. What does that mean? This means I know it's quadratic. Uh, wait, but 6 isn't 2. Didn't we get 2 on the last one? So what does the 6 mean? Oh, well, the 6 means that my a value is going to be half of that. So this tells me that my a value is going to be 3. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So this is actually great. So now I'm going to make my columns here. And now, instead of checking n squared like before, I'm going to check 3n squared. So this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. So if n is 1... We would get 3. I would get 3. 3n squared. Yeah. 1 squared is 1 times 3 is 3. n is 2. 2 squared is 4. 3 is 12. 3 squared is 9 times 3 is 27. 4 squared is 16 times 3 is 48. So I want to know how far off is this column from my original numbers. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make my off by column. So if I want to get from 3 to 0, I would have to subtract 3. Right. If I want to get from 12 to 0, I would have to subtract 12. 27 to 6, that's minus 21. Mm -hmm. From 48 to 18, that's minus 30. Sounds good to me. Seems like I'm off by a lot, but I'm excited because that looks pretty constant to me. Oh, yeah. Minus. Wait, how come it's not plus 9? Well, I'm going from negative 3 to negative 12, right? So I'm going more negative. Oh, we're going down. We're going okay. down. So that's minus, and that's minus. So now I've, I've just figured out, Mrs. Strader, that this is linear. Oh, because the first difference is constant. Because all these differences are negative. I'm going to take that shortcut, I think. You like that one? Yeah, I like that. Plus, I'm kind of running out of space over there. I'm a big fan of saving time. I like saving time, especially on a test. Yes. So I can rewrite this column like a linear... Like the arithmetic. Yeah, arithmetic explicit formula. Yeah. So that's going to be my first term's negative 3, and I'm subtracting 9 every time. And then minus 1. So if I simplify that, that gives me, let's see, I'm going to write it right here, negative 3 minus 9n plus 9, which simplifies to negative 9n plus 6. So now all I'm, I'm realizing that all I have to do is just take 3n squared and combine it with this, and that should give me my quadratic, because this tells me that my b value is negative 9 and my c is 6. Nice. So I get a sub n equals 3n squared minus 9n plus 6. Excellent. I was also wondering if we could go backwards. Would that help us? So like, see how our pattern here started at 0, 0? Mm-hmm. Would we, would we be able to go backwards? Oh, like find the number that came before this. Yeah. We know that this had to be plus 6, right, because this one's constant down here. Maybe okay. I should change colors. This had to be plus 6. So what plus 6 gives me 0? What plus 6 gives me 0? The opposite, so negative 6. So negative 6. So then you, you're so asking what... What minus 6... Gets me to 0? Gets me to 0. 6. 6. Oh, and doesn't that give me my constant? Because this is technically a sub 0, because this was a sub 1, and this was a sub 2, and this was a sub 3. So, okay, so you're saying that means that the... That I'm right. The plus 6 at the end of our, our formula came from there. Yeah. Nice. Looks good to me. Looks good to me. Awesome. All right, good luck, everybody.